Hello, it's episode 359 of the Keto Diet Podcast. My name is Leanne Vogel. I'm a holistic nutritionist and bestselling author of the Keto Diet, the Keto Diet Cookbook, and Keto for Women. I love talking about keto, and today is no exception. We're talking about fasting mimicking, what it is, how it works, if you could do it or not, and so... I'm really pumped to share this message with you. And if you have questions about today's content, you can head on over to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and ask me. Now, I started my blog, Healthful Pursuit, uh, in 2010. It's been a while. It's been a hot minute. And I remember sitting around the campfire with my dad. We came up with this idea of like the fact that my journey is always changing. And my dad was like, if you call it vegan something, it's going to age out because Leanne, you are never going to stay vegan. And I was like, dad, as if, of course, I'm going to stay vegan. I love this. This is the answer to all my problems. And uh, then I went keto literally three years later. So <laughs> so I'm super glad my dad had the foresight to be like, don't name it anything vegan. Also, don't name it anything like keto or anything, just something to do with your pursuit. And so we landed on healthful pursuit. Love the name. However, having a business over something that people can't spell or understand, you might hear helpful pursuit or healthy full pursuit. What else have I heard? Just so many different things that aren't helpful pursuit. So if you have no idea how to contact me, just click around in the show notes until you find the links. And on that is going to be the link that you can access to contact me. If that still doesn't work, just go to Instagram and type in Leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E Vogel, V as in Victor, (laughs) O-G-E-L. Oh, man. So with that being said, I'm so happy to see you here. And let's get started with today's episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. Hey, I'm Leanne Vogel. You're listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. I've created a free guide with tips on how to start keto and maintain your fat-fueled life. Grab it at healthfulpursuit.com slash free as a little thank you for listening to the show. So there are a bunch of different versions of the fasting mimicking diet. Some versions just outline specific macronutrient requirements like 80% fat, 10% protein, and 10% carbohydrate, while others require you to purchase certain supplements. Really, the thought around fast mimicking is really basically the ketogenic diet. And I'm finding, especially lately with keto gaining popularity, people are trying to come up with different ways of saying the same thing in hopes that they'll make money. And while I'm sure that 99.9% of people have the best intentions of just trying to help people, there's always that 0.1% that is just repackaging the same thing. And you end up spending money on something that you could have really figured out yourself in like 2.4 seconds. And so I think it's really important that we educate ourselves that we understand what keywords people are using so that we can um, be conscious with where we put our money, our time and our energy, because your time and your energy is just as important as the dollars that you spend on certain products. So fasting mimicking is the ketogenic diet. We are mimicking fasting by keeping our insulin balanced and keeping our blood sugar low. We are able to really mimic fasting. Now, a lot of brands and doctors and other programs out there will use supplements in order to uh, mimic fasting. And while supplements can be super beneficial, if you're feeling stressed and pressured into trying new forms of the ketogenic diet, just remember that the ketogenic diet is accessible to all and you really don't need to spend that much money on making it work for you. There's so many resources that you can use without having to rely on expensive supplements or food programs and really just eat keto. Now, fasting mimicking is a process where we are basically eating a ketogenic diet or mimicking the process of fasting without having to fast long term. Because fasting long term for some, especially women, can be really challenging on our adrenals. That's why the ketogenic diet can be so healthful on our adrenals because we are mimicking that fast. So we are encouraging more autophagy, which is the turnover of cells and the regeneration of those cells without having to fast for two, three, four, five, 20 days in order to get the same results. And of course, if you can fast that long and you have a good relationship with your body and food, heck, 
why not try it? If your health is in a place where you're able to do it, I think it's always beneficial to try different things and see if it works for you. But for some, that's not an option. And the way I see fasting, and I've said this many times, but I continue to get this question, so I'll just keep saying it until people stop asking. I really see fasting as being two different approaches. So it really depends on your goal. And just because you choose a specific goal doesn't mean you cannot switch between these goals. So the first goal with fasting is to regulate your blood sugar. Now that's where fast mimicking comes in by eating the ketogenic diet. Your body feels that it's fasting slightly. So it regulates your blood sugar. It lowers down that insulin it balances all those processes out. So we are in a way fasting by balancing our blood sugar. Then there's the fasting, which is going to amp up autophagy, which we already spoke about. And you can amp up autophagy during fasting by supplementing with bergamot oil. Uh, Another way to get bergamot oil is to just make some Earl Grey tea, which will do the same thing and has the bergamot oil in it and is far more accessible than actually ordering some bergamot oil online. And so you have these two approaches. One goal is to regulate your blood sugar and one is to increase autophagy. Now with regulating your blood sugar, one way to go about that with fasting is to have fatty coffees that will continue to regulate your blood sugar. That's how I created the rocket fuel latte. I will include a link in the show notes on the rocket fuel latte. If you don't know what that is, it's just simply a fatty coffee that includes some protein and some carbohydrate to help balance things out to keep your leptin in check so that you're able to fast longer. And then there's the fasting, which increases autophagy, which requires you to just drink water during your fast. Now the key to fasting with keto, as with anything out there is to listen to your body. But I wanted to get to the actual questions you had about fasting so we can really delve deep into what's what. Perfect Keto creates the ultimate products for making the keto lifestyle easier and more effective. Many of their products are dairy-free, made in the USA, gluten-free, doctor-approved, and use zero fillers. From exogenous ketones to boost your ketone levels for mental clarity, MCT oil powder for making your coffee fatty and creamy without the dairy, beauty and sleep collagen, a collagen-rich combination of L-theanine and magnesium to help insomnia, stress, and anxiety that also benefits your hair, skin, and nails and so much more. But can we talk for a moment about this beauty and sleep collagen? I'm really enjoying the turmeric coconut latte flavor, an awesome after dinner snack when I just want a little something. With just 40 calories, two grams of carbs, and seven grams of protein, it hits the spot, helping my after dinner sweet tooth and leads to better Z's. Like for real, I took it for the first time in the early afternoon and had to have a nap. Get 20% off anything in their shop by going to perfectketo.com com slash keto diet pod and use the coupon code KDP20 for 20% off your entire order. KDP20 coupon code can only be used once. So use it wisely over at perfectketo.com slash keto diet pod. So here are some specific questions that you had about the fasting mimicking diet. First one is, I'm so confused about fasting, one meal a day, five to two, fasting mimicking diet, and every variety of condensed eating windows and intermittent fasting. So one meal a day is where you only eat one meal a day. Now, for somebody who has or rather can eat a ton of food in one sitting, this works really, really great. Otherwise, for somebody like me, my digestive system doesn't do good with meals over around 1,200 calories, give or take, depending on the volume. I am a volume eater, so I can do a lot of volume. But if I have more than 100-ish grams of fat in one meal, it makes me feel very ill. So keep that in mind with one meal a day if you're the type of person who likes to eat throughout the day or if you've tried one meal in one day and felt absolutely sick, this approach might not be well for you. And in an episode that I did with Megan Ramos, I'll include the link in today's show notes, um, we chat a little bit about fasting protocols and why this might not be a good idea. Then you have the five to two and five to two um, signals how many days in the week you're either fasting or not fasting or rather counting calories or not counting calories. There are a couple of ways to do this approach. And so with five to two, basically with the five days out of the week, you are eating a ketogenic diet or however you eat and maybe following a calorie count, maybe following macros. But the key here is that you're eating a ketogenic diet, at least for those that are keto. I think the five to two also applies for people 
people that aren't eating keto, but we're, you're listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. So we're going to focus on keto. So five days you're eating keto and you're eating to satiation. Two days, you're either fasting fully and not eating or you're restricting calories immensely. So maybe you're having 500 calories in the day, 700 calories in a day. It really depends on what program you follow to determine what those rules are. I've had friends and clients also try this eating style. I haven't heard of anyone having success with it, but that's not to say that that doesn't exist because I'm only one human talking to a select group of people. Uh, now with uh, one meal a day, you're really practicing that autophagy process. So of the two goals I talked about in fasting at the beginning, one meal a day, you're encouraging autophagy. Five to two, you're doing five days of blood glucose regulation, which is the first goal that we talked about with fasting. And then those two days, you're relying more on autophagy there. Then we have the fasting mimicking diet we'll be chatted about. Really, I see fasting mimicking as being exactly just eating keto every day. I know that there are supplements and programs out there that change things, but fasting mimicking is the ketogenic diet. So I hope that that was uh, helpful in explaining um, things and you're able to see that all these different sorts of fasts really lead into the two different goals. Do you want to regulate your blood sugar or do you want to do autophagy or do you want to do both? A while back, we received a question on the podcast about keto bars and how easy it is to eat two, three, or four bars in one sitting. Now, I've thought a lot about this like for quite a while, and I too struggled with it to the point where I couldn't have keto bars in the house because I would eat far too many in place of preparing like a proper balanced keto meal. There are some days where a take along with you bar is convenient and at times absolutely necessary. So I started looking for an alternative, something more balanced and a bar that would deliver nutrients, not just a balance of macros where my body would be satiated by one and not in search of more and more and more. Like I think one time I had six keto bars in one sitting and I didn't feel so good after. And then I found that very bar. So here are the ingredients in the new bar that I'm now eating only one of at, at each sitting. Organic cashew butter, organic tapioca fiber syrup, 100% grass fed bone broth protein, organic dried apples, organic dates, organic pumpkin seeds, organic superfood blend, which includes organic kale, organic broccoli, organic spinach, organic acerola, organic wild blueberry, organic spirulina, organic ginger, organic turmeric, organic sunflower lecithin, organic cinnamon, organic flavors, Himalayan pink sea salt, organic rosemary extract, and monk fruit extract. Now this is made with certified organic, if you didn't catch that, organic, <laughs> antioxidant-rich superfoods, cold-pressed, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, non-GMO, contains healthy proteins, fats, and vital nutrients, no added sugars, artificial sweeteners, or sugar alcohols. It's very low in natural sugars at four grams or less, depending on the flavor, and it's whole food-based. Now, this bar is from Paleo Valley. They call it the superfood bar, and I'm happy to report I eat one, and I'm satiated, and I move on. No more bar binges. Now, this is huge, 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 huge for me. Head on over to paleovalley.com, load up your cart with superfood bars and whatever else you find that tickles your fancy, enter the code KETO at checkout and receive 15% off your first order. Again, that's paleovalley.com and use the code KETO for 15% off your first order. The second question, it seems that there's a fine line between fasting being the holy grail or a metabolism killer. I totally agree with you, but I don't think that there's a fine line. I think it's a quite a big black line that's a couple feet wide and very, very long. I see one meal a day as being a total killer to your metabolism. I've chatted with some pretty big leaders in the space, including Dr. Jason Fung on this, and he agrees or rather agreed during that conversation that one meal a day wasn't the best route. 
and um, five to two. I could see if you're doing a five to two and you're not limiting your calories on those five days and then you are limiting your calories on the two days, that should be pretty okay. But I think it really comes down to how many calories your body needs to survive and where you're at with your hormones. If you have balanced hormones, you can fast for much longer than a woman that does not have balanced hormones. So that's a pretty big line. Like if you're If your hormones are balanced, awesome. If your hormones aren't balanced, I wouldn't practice fasting all that frequently. Now, again, for metabolism killers, if you're fasting 18 to 24 hours a day and you're hungry and you're ignoring that, metabolism killer. And the third question, is a fasting mimicking diet as effective as water fasting? Okay, so this gets into the different types of fasting mimicking diets and the different programs out there. I've always seen fasting mimicking as just eating a ketogenic diet, following your macros and eating as much as you need to feel great. That is mimicking a fast. But then you have the fasting mimicking approach that limits your calories to a very small amount. So say 500 calories where you're hitting your keto macros, but in very small amounts. I think that this works perhaps for severely obese people that have tried everything and cannot lose weight and they need to for health reasons. Now, normally I don't use the O word obese because that can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. But if you are severely obese and you have tried everything and you need to lose weight, fasting mimicking might be an approach you want to try or water fasting. But I highly recommend that you chat with a healthcare professional and that you're monitored throughout the experience to make sure that you are staying safe throughout the whole experience. I think for the average person who wants to lose maybe 10 to 40 pounds, even upwards of 80 pounds, I don't think we need to go to these drastic extremes to get the results we want. Unfortunately, we live in a world where if you can lose one pound a month, that's great. But if you can lose 10 pounds a month not eating a lot, then you'll do it, even at the cost of your health, which never really, well, rather hasn't made sense to me over the last couple of years, did make sense to me when I was really just with my eating where like if I can get there faster and affect my health who cares because then I'll be beautiful and unfortunately that's just not the way the body works there will come a time if you continue to abuse your body by not eating enough and mimicking fasting or doing all these little things that although may help you lose weight actually affect your health long term your body will get to a point where it cannot lose weight where it stops producing hormones where your thyroid gets so bad that your metabolism tanks that you start to gain weight because your thyroid is imbalanced and there's nothing you can do eating or not eating to fix it. And that's not to make it sound hopeless. There are definitely things you can do in that circumstance. But if you can just eat well with whole foods and eat to satiation and get your leptin balanced so that you're not overeating and address cravings by adjusting different micronutrients so that you don't feel a craving so that you can live a long life and feel happy the whole time. Why wouldn't you want to do that? I hope that helps with the question, fasting mimicking diet as effective as water fasting. And if you have more questions about fasting or you want to learn more about fasting, you can head to episode 94 that I did with Megan Ramos. I hope you had a blast. Again, you can reach out to me on Instagram at Leanne Vogel. I'm excited to see you on over there. And I will see you back here for another episode of the Keto Diet Podcast next Tuesday. See you then. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. Music for the Keto Diet Podcast provided by Yechi. Follow Jacob on Instagram at Yechi underscore official and on Spotify as Yechi. That's Y-E-C-H-I. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.